two, one, two, boom, one, two, boom. Let's set it to five. There's a, even if you do that, there's an interesting thing that's going to take place here. It is going to randomly generate a number between one and five in this particular case, but then it's going to keep using that recalculation. And I, and I can prove it. What we're going to do is call on some of the uh, information we can pull out of the view menu. I'm going to come down to particle times. Now, what this is doing, I'm going to pause for just a second so the numbers will quit uh, jamming. And well, I was going to. There, there we you go. go. We'll get the particles out of the way. On the left, we have the duration of our emitter. So this duration that's being calculated calculated in this random range is ticking along on the left-hand side of the slash mark. And remember, what he means by duration, basically the emitter is going to fire, 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 and we're going to hit the end of the cycle. And right. then it's just going to restart the next cycle, and it's just going to keep looping, if you will. So this is how long we are along in the current cycle in its duration. That's right. And on the right-hand side, we have how long since the thing has been running. So yeah. really, this has been running for 15 seconds. If I restart it, the number on the right will go to zero. So will this. This will tick up to the total duration. This will just keep right on counting. That's right. So let's go ahead and just restart so, and you can see that happen. Yeah, here we go. So one, two. Now watch one, this number really closely. Two. Now I know that we're probably not capturing anywhere near real time, but what we're seeing over here is that we're counting up to two point maybe five or so, two point some change. Yeah, two point six, and it resets to zero every single time, even though Zach has set up a range of one to five. Right. So it's doing a random range, but it's not recalculating that random uh, range each time. So we need to activate B duration recalc each loop. And now that random range is going to change each time the emitter uh, re restarts its uh, its duration calculation. Yeah. So there, uh, first time we made it all up to four seconds. The second time we made it up to three. There we made it up to three again. One, two, three. Up three again. Hang on. One, two. Three, a little higher. Oh, there you go. So you can see that duration. <laughs> oh, there was four. Change I saw four. There you go. All right, now what I'm going to do before we leave out here is I'm going to add one more entry to the burst list so we end up with a second burst. Do so so one at like 0.2 and one at 0.8. All right, well, 20% along and then 80% along. But now since he's randomized the range, we're going to get bursts at very unpredicted times because now he's got two different burst times, and he's bursting, what, 60 particles yep. here? Well, between 40 and 60, and the other one was between, what was it, 60 it's and 160. Or yeah. You can see the numbers right here on the, on the property. And then he's saying that, you know, in one of them do the burst at 20% way along the duration, the other one do it at 80% along. But now since we're randomly changing that duration, every single cycle of the particles, we really start to get a random burst distribution. That's right. So just remember, if you really want to randomize things, you need to not only uh, set up your emitter duration low and your emitter duration, you also need to check duration use range and recalc each loop. So That's make right. sure all of those are on. And if things don't look like they're working right, make sure to restart your simulation. That's right. Okay, so with that, we have the uh, take a look back in our the emissions that I'm looking for. Yeah, let's go ahead and close this out. I will, before we leave out here, we'll reset save our package just to be safe and we'll close out of here and dun, 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 dun. we got a burst all right looking good but there's one more thing it's all going can we go up into the floor and see mm -hmm. them over there yes we can yes we can we see particles falling way out of our level not that that's a problem but what if we wanted to have the particles actually collide with the floor perhaps die or bounce did you see that back there? I'd, whoa, that's pretty scary. <laughs> Let's pretend I didn't see that right. Uh, it's, it's no big deal. I, I, apparently, I had this piece of the floor selected when I grabbed my flare material. <laughs> so I'm going to alt-right-click on this part of the floor and alt-left-click over there to replace that. Okay, now I'm not as frightened. Okay, so... I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I want, yeah, you're still frightened, of course. What we want to do is have the sparks hit the floor and perform some sort of a bounce. That's right. So let's go back into the generic browser. We'll open Cascade back up. And this is really simple. All we need to do is add a new uh, module, which will be the... Collision. collision module. And that's really it. Uh, believe it or not, we have some sort of collision taking place, which we can immediately prove if we get rid of the generic browser, and we're not spitting anything out right now. That's kind of scary. So let's Why is that? What's going on, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid, are you? Yes, I am afraid. We you have, broke it. We have put our Collide. emitter inside yep. a static mesh, and so we're actually colliding with the inside of the dragon's in, in mouth. In case you guys didn't realize this a minute ago when he said, but we're going to have a problem when we put this in here. That's what he was getting at. He just never finished his sentence. That's right. Well, I wanted to get everybody surprised. So now <laughs> he's not yeah, ripping off his teeth. You pull it out a little bit, he's drooling, and then if we pull it out all the way, he's spitting. There you again. go. Very nice. So you could make adjustments to the static mesh's collision if this was a real major thing. 
thing. Sure. In a lot of cases, you'll find that it you know, probably doesn't matter so much to just leave it out a little bit. It's still going yeah, it looks to uh, good. It's still look good to your player. Now let's go down to the floor and look up underneath it again. All right. Well, if you go down under the floor, I'll go right under it. Look Boom. at that. So we have no bouncing because we haven't set up any sort of bounce condition, but... But the particles are dying when they hit the floor. Right. They are As colliding. a matter of fact, if you look really close, you can see them die. They'll hit the floor and then immediately just start to fall. You can just barely make it out. It might not even show up on the video. But what we want is some sort of bouncing to take place. So we're going to go back into Cascade and take a look at the properties of this collision module. And the very first thing we have is damping factor. This controls how much energy your particles will retain after colliding with a surface. And with a value of zero, they're retaining no energy, which means they're more or less just falling flat and not moving anymore. What I'm going to do is change this to a constant value. I really don't. Well, we can do a random range. I don't see why not. But let's uh, maybe start off with a, a maximum of 0.5. I hadn't thought about using a, a uniform, but we could do it. And then we'll do a minimum of, say, 0.2. So, the weakest amount of, uh, of energy that our particles will have after they bounce will be 0.2, which is 20% of their overall energy, and the most amount they'll save is half of their energy, or 0.5. So with that, let's minimize and take a look again. Hey, Groovy, we've got bouncing. And we get all Whoa. sorts of really cool <laughs> bouncing taking place, and because we have that random range, you can see different amounts of bounce coming yeah. out of each one. Yeah, very nice. And the burst is really cool. Yeah, it is. I wish it would Big happen shower maybe a little more often. Well, gee, with a range of 1 to 5. That's true. I could <laughs> Probably go back in there and fix that. Probably, so yeah, maybe. Jump back down to our emitter One duration. Three. Set that in three. I was going to say maybe two, but now we'll get a lot more bursts, a lot more bursts. For the <laughs> As it's shower, shower. There we go. And it's coming, it's coming, maybe. There it comes. And really, right. with that, that is the entirety of this effect. Now, we did promise you one more thing before the video was over, and that's that we would walk you through the Cascade user interface. And now that we have a particle effect that is uh, visible for us to, to take a look at, we can do that. And you can see some of the things that are actually going on. So for starters, let me go ahead and turn off particle times for okay. now. We'll just uh, keep our little spray of particles. As a visible. matter of fact, let's go ahead and just pause the particle system at the moment. Sure thing. Uh, we'll just click pause. All and right. Starting at the very top, we have the menu bar with the edit menu. This has regenerate lowest LOD as the very first entry. In order to explain this, we need to go into a discussion of LODs, which I'm going to save until we get to the toolbar. So don't worry, there's actually a button on the toolbar which performs this operation, so we'll explain it then. For we'll now, be right back. Yeah, for now, just roll with us. We have a uh, save package, which I'm sure you all know what that does. We've already used it. Of course, it's just a shortcut way of doing it here as opposed to jumping back to the generic browser and saving your package with the particles in it. Which is great if you have Cascade maximized like I do. Mm -hmm. Under the view menu, we have all sorts of stuff that we can show in the view to help us diagnose certain aspects of our particle system. We can do the origin axes, which if we take a look, these are visible on the particle system right where it's being born. It's just uh, the local axes of the emitter itself. We can come down under here. Let's turn that off. We have particle counts. All right, go ahead and hit play now. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, this to make it change. Let's, boom, there you go. Now, what this gives you is two numbers. The number on the right is the maximum number of particles that will be in this system. Like, if, if this thing fired the, the most number of particles it could possibly fire, we'd have 390. On the left, we see the number of particles that are actually in the system. So you'll notice it gets really high, and then it'll, it'll die down as particles start to decrease. The burst it jumps up quickly. That's right. So uh, 606 has goes. changed because uh, we the highest number has changed, like this is uh, keeping track of the, uh, the largest number that have been in the system so far. All right, moving down from here, let's turn that off. We have particle times. Now, I've already demonstrated this, but on the left, we have the, um, the emitter duration for this particular cycle. On the right, we have how long this uh, simulation has been running. If I restart, they both set to zero. You'll notice the one on the left will keep restarting when each uh, duration is over. The one on the right will just keep right on counting. All right, now let's turn that off. View particle distance. This is non-functional. We have uh, view geometry. At this time. At this time. As of right now, this uh, property does nothing. But, okay, we have geometry, which gives you this really cool sort of half-geometric, half-terrain-based mesh that is in your, uh, in your some particle. Some organic, some yeah. not so organic. And this is a way for you to test collisions. Now, currently, as you can see, it's fairly useless for our effect because we're actually starting off underneath the level of the floor. 
to fix that, we need to go into View and open up our geometry properties. Now, let's go ahead and just kind of collapse everything down. If I open up Primitive Component, you'll see Translation. And if I take Z and maybe set it to negative 150, boom, that pushes our geometry down. So now our particles are up above it, and you can see them hitting the ground and starting to scatter down the hill. Yeah, actually, if we had a very complex level taking place back in the editor, it would be a lot wiser to work with bouncing collision and all that right here as opposed to going back and going into a game mode over there and watching real time up. It just saves you time and it effort. Does. And it looks really nice. <laughs> But anyways, when you're done, let's go ahead and close out the properties, and I don't think we necessarily need to see geometry anymore, so we'll go ahead and close that. Underneath this, we have Save Cam Position, which sounds